Hi, everybody. My name is Frédéric Boutelet. I'm an HPC system engineer, and I'm in charge of the management of the HPC infrastructure at the University of Namibia. I'm very pleased to present you the first session of the 2020 CCHPC training called Introduction to High Performance Computing. This is a schedule of this CC training. This 2020 session goes from the basic usage of the HPC cluster to program, parallel MPI programming, debugging, and profiling applications. This is a complete schedule of this 2020 session. These training sessions cover almost everything that is needed to use an HPC cluster in the most effective way. But what is HPC? HPC stands for High Performance Computing and refers to any computational activity requiring more than a single computer to execute a task. For these activities, we use supercomputer and computer cluster. Here is an example of one iconic supercomputer, the Cree 1A, developed by Cree in 1977. For comparison, a smartphone in your pocket is more than a dozen times more powerful than that is called supercomputer. <clears throat> Modern supercomputers are computer cluster. A cluster is a group of servers that work together to be seen as a single computer. <clears throat> this picture, picture shows you one of the most powerful supercomputers in Europe, Marino Strom, operated by the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and located in the 19th century chapel. Basically, a cluster is composed of compute nodes, and compute nodes is a powerful computer. Each compute node contains several core. A core can be considered as a processing unit. In high performance computing, we use the flop as a unit to measure the computing power of a cluster. A flop is an arithmetic operation on floating point number. Today's supercomputer has the power of several petaflops. That means 10 to the power of 15 floating point operation per second. The top 500 project ranked the 500 most powerful supercomputer in the world. Currently, the number one supercomputer is located in Kobe, Japan, and has a power of more than 400 petaflops. To scale, the power consumed by this supercomputer is roughly equivalent to the power consumed by a city of 100,000 inhabitants. But we need more powerful cluster. There are countries compete to set up the further scale system. And the scale system are capable of at least one exaflop or a billion or billion floating point calculation per second. Here is the prototype of the next Chinese SR scale supercomputer, Tinhood, to be deployed in Kansu. <clears throat> in Europe, supercomputers are organized in an HPC pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, you will find the most powerful supercomputer in Europe. Next, T1 supercomputer are mostly national or regional centers. Tier 2 supercomputers are localized in local centers like universities and research centers. In Europe, access to Tier 0 system can be done via PRAISE. PRAISE is the partnership for advanced computing in Europe. PRAISE systems are accessible to researchers around the world through call of proposal. One of the most powerful tier zero supercomputers in Europe is Pizdane, located at Lugano. This supercomputer is accessible through Prez. Also, this machine is used by Meteo Suisse. Tier 1 supercomputers are mostly national or regional supercomputers. 
you should you not use a tier zero supercomputer without testing your application on a tier one supercomputer. In Belgium, tier one and tier two are funded at the regional level. The Flemish Supercomputer Center is an organization making supercomputer infrastructure available for both the academic and industrial. In the French speaking part of Belgium, the Consortium des Equipments Vehicles Intensifs is supported by the Fund for Scientific Research and the Wallon region. The current tier one system in the Flemish region is Brignac, operated by the KU Leuven. Tier two subclusters are located in the five Flemish universities. In the French speaking part of Belgium, the most powerful supercomputer is located at Gosli, close to the Charleroi Airport, and, and is operated by Cenero. Cenero is a research center in simulation for the aerospace sector, and a share of 60% of this T1 supercomputer is devoted to the university user. <coughs> As in the Flemish region, CSIC supercomputers are located in the universities and access to this supercomputer is done via the CC. What is the CC? As I said before, CC stands for Consortium des Equipments de Calcul Intensif. It's a consortium of high performance computing center of the UC Louvain, ULB, Uliège, Humans, and UNAMUR. The CC is funded by the Fund for Scientific Research as well as the Wallonian region. The five tier two supercomputers are accessible by all the researchers from the five member universities. There are five clusters at CC. The CC cluster has been designed to accommodate the large diversity of needs the researchers of the researchers of the five universities. For example, several clusters are designed for section workload. This is the case for Hercules and Dragon. The other one are designed for parallel workload. By now, Dragon 2 is the only CC cluster that provides access to GPU. The CC infrastructure is currently being upgraded. The method tree, located at the SC Louvain, has been upgraded in 2018. Hercules and Dragon has been upgraded last year. Vega will be decommissioned at the end of this year, and NIC4 will be replaced by NIC5 before the end of this year. There are currently more than 400 active users from the five universities using this, the infrastructure of the CC. You can see the field of application that is summarized in this stack cloud. The CC also provides a central storage solution, which is visible from all the front end and compute nodes of all the CC clusters. Each cluster has its own gateway that acts like a cache to access distributed, this distributed storage. The main purpose of this storage is to store user data to be shared between the cluster as well as the software built for each cluster. As this distributed storage solution provides common directory for all the CC cluster, there is no need to transfer data between cluster using ACP. To use also the usual common software repository, allow almost all software installed on a cluster to be available to all the CC clusters. In a nutshell, a, cluster, a computer cluster is composed of four parts. One or several login nodes allow users to connect to the cluster. The computing power is provided by several dedicated computers called compute nodes. A shared storage allows the user to store the input and the output files. And an high performance network interconnects all trees.
from a login node, you can manage your file, prepare your input file, and submit job to the system. <coughs> be aware that computation heavy jobs must be submitted to the compute node. I will show you later how to use it. On the C cluster, there are several levels of storage. Depending on the usage, you should use a specific storage. For example, for IO intensive job, the storage attached to the compute node or the AI performance global scratch should be used for writing the output of your jobs. On the other hand, the C home should be using, used only to share data, data between CC clusters. Also, all CC clusters are running Linux, mostly Red Hat derivatives like CentOS or Scientific Linux. Let's go through the HPC resources available at CC. We see a summary of all those clusters displayed on the CC webpage. As stated before, each CC cluster has different characteristics. At Unamur, for example, Hercules 2 is a high memory cluster designed to run memory demand jobs. Also, the storage configuration has been adapted to cope with jobs that generate or consume a large amount of data. You can use, use up to 8 terabytes on local storage on the compute node for the duration of your job. Support at Unamur is provided by Juan and myself. We also operate a small HPC cluster, mainly used for training and reserved for the students. At the University of Mons, a new cluster has been recently installed. The Dragon 2 cluster is the only one cluster in CC that provides access to GPU. There is, in fact, there is four NVIDIA Volta card install, installed on Dragon 2. Support at Humons is provided by, by Sebastian. Also, Humons operates also other HPC resource cluster for specific usage. These clusters are not available to CC users. At UC Luma, the Metro 3 is in production since 2018. This cluster provides more than 2,000 cores and is also designed for parallel workload. And at UC Luma, the support is provided by the CSM team. Tuisselva operates also an HPC cluster called Manbach. Charles Manbach was, in fact, a friend of George Lemaitre. Manbach is made of several generations of hardware and provides access to GPU as well as Xeon file. This cluster is not available to CC users. At Liège, a new cluster is being deployed. NIC5 will, will, will replace NIC4 and will be accessible by the end of this year. As for NIC4, NIC5 is a cluster mainly designed for parallel job and intensive IO. Support at Liège is provided by David. At ULB, the Vega cluster is designed to handle many single core jobs, but also parallel jobs. Be aware that Vega will be decommissioned at the end of this year. As far as the tier 1 is concerned, hosted by and operated by Scenario, Xenop is a total of more than 20,000 cores, with up to 64 GB of RAM. All the nodes are interconnected by the with a fast network, and they have access to a fast 350 terabyte parallel file system. This cluster is 
suitable for massively parallel job with many communication or a lot of parallel disk I.O. As I said before, 60% of the computing resource of Zenob is devoted to the university user. You should contact the, your local support to get access to this supercomputer. Okay, enough of marketing. Mm -hmm. Let's get practical and see how to get an CC account. First, go to the official CC page and you can click on create account on the link located in the upper right corner. Fill in your email. Please note that you must use your official email address provided by your university. Gmail, mail addresses are not allowed. Then you will receive an email with a link. Then follow the link, fill the form, and you receive your key to connect to the CC. Please note that your key is protected with a passphrase you have entered during the procedure. If you lose your password, you will have to restart all the procedure because we cannot recover your passphrase in any case. When you are going to create it, you have to connect to our login nodes. Connection to any CC cluster is done using the SSH protocol. SSH or Secure Shell is a remote protocol that allows users to connect to a remote server over the network. To use SSH, you need an SSH client on your machine. On Windows, there are several applications that are available. But at CC, we recommend to use MobXTAM. You will find the documentation on the OCC website how to configure MobXTAM. On the other hand, on Linux and Mac OS, you should use the default SSH command. Mobile Xtam is quite easy to use and don't need to be installed on your machine. In the same application, you get a terminal to enter a remote server, as well as a file transfer utility that allows you to download or upload your file on any CC cluster. When you are connected to a login node, the software that interprets execute your commands is Bash. Bash is a shell, a command processor that can be used in an interactive or non-interactive manner. By pattern, R, or other scripting language, you can write Bash scripts. On CC cluster, Bash is the default login shell and is also used for Bash script, job script. To use an application on HPC cluster, first of all, you need to load the corresponding module. To do that, you should use the command module load and the name of the module. To unload the module, you should use module unload and the name of the module. To see which module we have loaded in your environment, you should use module list. The command module available list all the available modules on the cluster, whereas module spider is used to search for specific modules. So you can write module spider Python and it will show you all the modules related to Python. For example, there is, a, there is the output of, of output module available on a CC cluster. Any module listed here, can be loaded using module load and the name of the module. When loaded, you can use the application or the library in an interactive uh, way or in bash script. Please note that you can see here that several applications may have several versions available. This is the case for Fluent, for example, or the, on Geos. This topic have addressed it by the following training session. Introduction to Linux and the command line, connecting with SSH from Linux or Mac, 
as well as connecting with SSH from Windows. And introduction to module and software on my CC cluster. And now, how to run my simulation on a CC cluster. You can use a HPC cluster in an interactive manner or by running batch, batch jobs. You should use interactive processing for short tasks, tasks with user interaction, graphical application. And you should use the batch system for long and running of parallel processes or when running a large number of short jobs at the same time. Bad jobs are submitted, submitted to a job scheduler. Job scheduler manage a job queue and run the job on the compute node. Once submitted, you can log off and wait for the job to complete. You submit bad job to the scheduler with detail of which resources, memory, processor type, etc., are required for the job to run. On the CC cluster, the job scheduler we use is called SLARM. To submit a job, first of all, you must connect to a login node. You can log in using, for example, from Linux using the command SSH in the name of the the cluster. When you submit a job to the job scheduler, you must specify the resource needed in terms of CPU time, memory, plat platform, the CPU type, the number of CPU, and you have to provide the list of the uh, instruction to be executed. The resource, as well as the command you want to run, must be written in a batch script. Let's create a, a, a script for this job. Here you can see the resource requirements, number of, of, uh, of no of uh, task, CPU, the time, one hour, and the memory, one gigabyte of memory, as well as the command to be executed. You should use the sbatch command to submit a simulation to the job scheduler. I repeat myself, you should not run any intensive or long life jobs directly to the login node. On Hercules, when I spot a, a computational AV job on the, on the front end, I kill it immediately. The sbatch command return an unique identifier for the job, the job ID. It is how the system refer to the job during its lifetime. By default, when a job is running, it creates a output file called slurm the job ID point out. out. But this behavior can be overwritten using a batch option. Beware that slurm will automatically kill your job if you consume more memory than the amount of results. And when the time is over. To console a uh, waiting or running job, you should use the S console command. And of course, you can console only your own job. Hopefully. This queue command show all job in the queue. You will see the following information the job ID, the job owner, the job state. You can see here that all the jobs are running, the number of nodes allocated to the job. Is the job uh, this job is running on Hercules, so we don't, there is no possibility to run job on several nodes. And also the time consumed by your job. On the CC website, you will find a job script generator. You can choose your cluster and your requirements, and then a job script template is generated.
Slim also provides several advanced, advanced features. For example, Array Jobs lets you submit the same job dozen or even dozen of times with different inputs. It is a lot quicker than manually submitting the job multiple times. Beware that each instance of an Array Jobs will have the same requirement in terms of CPU, memory, etc. Array jobs are usually used for parametric jobs. The bash, S bash option for creating an array is dash dash array. Just for example, to submit a job array with index value from between 0 and 31, you can use this line. To submit a job array with index value of 1, 3, 5, and 7, you can use this line. It is the same as here, you can submit a job with index value between 1 and 7 with a step, of, step size of 2. And you can use the percent character to limit the number of jobs in a job array running at the same time. Here, we limit for four jobs. There is a limit of four jobs running at the same time for this array. Here is an example of an array job with four tasks. Array job are given a job ID in the form job ID array ID. You can cancel an, an array job by using the sCancel command. And the sCancel command can be used to, lead, to kill all the tasks of, a, of a, an array job. In this case, you can use sCancel this number, but you can also kill a specific task by specifying the complete uh, uh, job ID. You can even uh, kill uh, ranges of uh, several uh, tasks in a job array. For complex pipeline, Slum also supports dependency between jobs. In some cases, you don't want a job to be started before another has finished. So you can specify in the batch script jobs that a job has, has a dependency with another one. Typically, job dependency are used to defer the start of a job until the specified dependency has been satisfied. And the dependency types can be any of the following, after, after any, after not okay, after okay. So you can start a job for example, after another uh, job has failed to, for error recovering, for example. And these topics are covered by the following training session, preparing, submitting, and managing job with learn, and using a checkpoint restart program to overcome time limits. There are several types of batch shops you can run on a HPC cluster. Serial job or sequential jobs can only use only a single processor core for execution. Threaded job only scale on a, can use several core on a single node. So threaded job only scale on a single node. MPI no uh, job can scale on several compute nodes. MPI, MPI jobs can take full advantage of the size of a cluster, but are quite harder to write and debug than serial or credit program. This topic I've covered by the, this, by the following training session, introduction to parallel computing, parallel programming with MPI, and parallel, parallel programming with OpenMP. Several script languages are available on the CC clusters. Among other, MATLAB and Python are covered by this CC training. But other scripting languages are also available, such, such as Perl, R, Tickle, etc. For example, the following Python versions are available on the CC cluster. And you can install additional library 
using PIP or by compiling it from source. MATLAB is also available on several CC clusters. It's a commercial application, so it's not available on all CC clusters. And for example, the following version of MATLAB are available on Hercules. On Hercules, you can submit jobs, MATLAB jobs. For example, you can write the following job script. Then you can submit it and wait is finished. When it's finished, you can check the output file and see that the job has, has been uh, terminated correctly. Also, you can run parallel job using MATLAB. You have to check uh, the MathWorks website to see which function which been, has been fit to from multi-trading. For example, there is a parallel job with MATLAB. Also, on Hercules, we have the license for the MATLAB compiler. MATLAB compiler generates standalone executable from your MATLAB script. And this executable can be run outside of the usual MATLAB environment and with, without using any MATLAB license. But not all uh, MATLAB functionality can be compiled. You should uh, check on the MathWorks uh, website a list of the, um, the compatible uh, functions. The big advantage of this uh, uh, the compiler is that you can, for example, compile your program on Hercules using a Hercules license and then execute your uh, application on another uh, CC cluster, such as LMS3, for example. These topics are covered by the following training sessions. Introduction to scripting and interpreting languages, Python, R and Octave. Introduction to Python, efficient use of MATLAB on the cluster, and efficient use of Python on the CC cluster. But what if I have my own code and, or I want to install a specific software on a CC cluster? On HPC system, you should recompile your application on each cluster code to get maximum performance. Let's take a look at the tools you can use to compile your, your, tool, your code. To compile an application, you first need a compiler. Several compilers are available on the CC cluster. GCC, the Intel compiler, and PGI, the Portland Group compiler, that is on, no, owned by NVIDIA. The default compiler on an HPC system is the GNU compiler collection. For ease of, com of compiling, you should use GNU. So the, you should use GNU. The Intel compiler, as well as the Intel MPI library, often give you the best performance for scientific pro programming. But it's made often uh, hard to use. For performance, you should use the Intel compiler. When doing GPU programming, you can try the Portland compiler. PGI provides OpenAC and a standard design to simplify parallel programming on CPU and GPU. To use it, you should, you should just have to load the PGI module. In many cases, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. To, you, don't have, you don't need to write your own server. As many optimized libraries are already, uh, already available on the CC cluster.
also compiler, parallel library, and optimized library, and uh, an organized, as we call, a compiler to chain. Compile to chain is a compiler and an MPI library, an implementation of the PLAS and LAPAC library for linear algebra routines, as well as the fast Fourier transform library. The first tool chain is based on GCC. It contains C, C++ and Fortran compiler for the GNU collection, as well as an implementation of the, lin uh, the linear algebra library, BLAS and LAPAC, as well as the, fa uh, the fast Fourier transform library, FTWU. An Intel tool chain is also available and contains the C, C++ and Fortran compiler for Mental, and the chain also includes the MAT kernel library, the MKL, the MKL implement BLAS, LAPAC, and so provides a fast Fourier transform library. All these topics are covered by the following training session. Introduction to scientific software development and deployment, introduction to compiler and compiling and optimized library, Introduction to structured programming with Fortran, Introduction to C programming language, and Introduction to object oriented programming with C. Now, how to find bugs and how to improve performance on my software. In order to improve performance of an application, you first need to find the hotspot. The hotspot is a section of the code when most time is spent during the program execution. There were several tools that help programmers to find a spot. One of these tools is called VTunes and is available on Hercules. This tool is able to analyze opening PMPI application <coughs> and this topic are covered by the following training session, debugging and profiling scientific code. During this session, other topics are also covered. How to use a GPU on CC cluster, how to use container on a HPC cluster infrastructure, how to store your data using text file, binary file, etc. Or how to use the Git. Also, there is an introduction to big data tools. And thank you for your attention, attention and happy computing. You're in direct, Bernard. Tu peux, tu peux reprendre ça, toi? Yeah, I, I will put uh, Damien live. Damien, can you share your, sc your screen? I'm sharing now. Yeah, okay. okay. Like well. uh, two seconds, you are not up. Two seconds. Yeah, you are live now. Okay, so thank you, Frédéric. Uh, we have uh, plenty of time for questions. So there are already questions that have been asked uh, during the presentation, and we did our best to answer them. Uh, but feel free to still ask questions. Uh, the slides, the links. Uh, for the slides, sorry, and the links to the videos are now available on the Indico website. So this is what you uh, can see right now. Um, and also there you will see that uh, we have the survey for the certificate of participation that it that is open. So if you uh, click uh, uh, here on fill out, you will uh, uh, be registered. And at the end of all sessions, we will uh, send certificates of participation to each participant with uh, exactly what sessions they attended. So I see that there are a few
few more questions coming in. So there's one question is, how do we calculate our task volume to arrange the work reasonably such as the number of CPUs used? Uh, that is a, a very large question, which is mostly covered in the MPI section, in the MPI session. So it always, of course, depends on what type of workload you have, uh, but the MPI session discusses this a bit and the open MP session also. So the two sessions about file program. So beware that on the Indico website, the second link, the second uh, um, uh, item that can be opened is a video for Unamur only. So if you are not from Unamur and you need uh, access to the video, use the YouTube link and the YouTube link can be accessed uh, without any registration. Okay, there's a question about the energy consumption of a supercomputer. Uh, I don't have figures in my hand, in my head, like like this. It's of course a large number. Uh, typically, we have 20 kilowatts per uh, rack, and a cluster is typically two or three racks, depending on the size. So, limited three is uh, two racks, and Zenobi is I don't remember five or six facts. I think uh, if my colleagues can have a uh, better information, they can also answer. Uh, it's uh, it's huge, and the electricity bill is of course uh, very large. So if you register to a few sessions, uh, you can actually have a summary of all the sessions in Indico where you have an agenda. You can download the agenda or register your agenda, your, uh, agenda uh, software to, to the Indico field. And so all the sessions you have registered to will uh, appear in your, uh, in your calendar. So I'll wait a few more minutes for questions. Um, but this afternoon session, we start at 2 p.m. and it will be delivered by Bernard. It's about Linux and the command line. So if you have never used a Linux computer before, it's a, a good idea to attend because all the clusters uh, run Linux. Uh, if you are registered to the session, you should have received this morning a link to the session. Okay, so that uh, that would be it for this session. Thank you for watching and see you next time. So don't forget if you want a certificate of participation to put on Indico to fill the survey. Uh, and that's basically it. And otherwise we will see you all uh, at two. I mean, all the register one at least. Thanks a lot.